Hey guys, Ivan here and in this video we have a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with an amazing physique update of Urs Kaletsinski at 5 weeks out of Mr. Olympia looking freaking shredded already. Now I don't know what the hell this guy is doing, what the hell he's thinking, why exactly is he this shredded at 5 weeks out? Chris Bumstead is nowhere near this conditioning right now. Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? I don't know, but, you know, he competed earlier this year, he competed in spring, he did Iron Classic, and he kind of probably, he probably tried to maintain his conditioning so he doesn't have to go crazy on his diet, on his prep for Mr. Olympia. He did not stay like this. This is not the conditioning that he maintained throughout the entire year. Of course, he was much more chubby than right here, but his body fat percent never really went over like maybe 10% body fat, like he was very very lean the entire off season, like between uh, his Arnold Classic and this uh, prep that he started, so he was very lean, not this lean, but he stayed very lean, so I'm guessing he hasn't really been cheating a lot, I'm guessing he stayed on gear, and I'm guessing he was still doing cardio, he was dieting, he was doing everything that it takes to maintain that kind of conditioning, and this is a double-edged sword, this is from my experience, from experience of people around me, when people are doing two consecutive shows like this in one year, uh, like six months apart or something like that, there are two schools of thought, there are two ways that you can do this, one would be what Urs actually did, which was maintain very low body fat percent, so you don't have to suffer again, since you're already lean, just maintain that, keep doing your cardio, stay on your diet, don't cheat too much, stay very very focused and then towards the end of the prep push things hard and then get super conditioned that's one way of doing things and it's not the healthiest way also there is a risk of burning out mentally like if you're so lean for so long and you're so focused you can only do that for a certain amount of time you can't do that forever and you can only hope that you're not gonna burn out before the show is over or you won't burn out at all but you know there is a risk of that happening the other way would be you know just relaxing a little bit more like uh, going off of the gear and uh, not doing cardio not dieting that strictly having cheat meals here and there having some normalcy in your life for a period for like two or three months how much you have you know just relax for that time period and then when the show approaches you step on that gas pedal and you get conditioned again like you push it again as you can see Urs right now is freaking lean like he's really shredded he looks like he's pretty much ready for the stage maybe one week out definitely not five weeks out Chris Bumstead is nowhere near this body fat right now and I'm sure the others are nowhere near this so I don't know maybe he's rushing things a little bit maybe he will burn out because of it or he can just start increasing the food slowly from this point since his body fat percent is so low and I'm sure he's using a lot of uh, hardening agents and uh, he's probably using a lot of fat burners he can probably bring up his food intake and uh, his metabolism would stay really fast so he would probably you know maybe have like sort of a rebound effect uh, in those last weeks before the show so maybe he's going to stay really conditioned then when he dehydrates he's going to get dry and during that let's say mini rebound he's going to get fuller and bigger because right now right here he looks pretty flat shredded but flat so if that's the goal if that's their approach then awesome yeah i've seen that happen it works most bodybuilders like to do it this way they're ready i mean open bodybuilders they are ready for the stage pretty much at like three two weeks out as far as body fat percent and then they increase the food so they come in big and full and also very lean so if that's the approach then you know this can turn out to be really good but right now if he just keeps dieting hard he's going to diet everything away all the muscle because i would have to say in these two photos that we just saw he does look a tad bit flat he will look much fuller in the off season of course he's depleted of course he's dieting it's normal i just hope he has a right uh, plan which i'm pretty sure he does 
Now, as far as his beard goes, I have to comment on it. I think it's no good. I think he should shave his face. He looks much better without a beard. He doesn't have a good beard. He would probably like to have a beard like Chris Bumstead, but it's not the case. Not right now. Probably never. Anyways, as far as his back and as far as his overall improvements that he made in his past, I wouldn't want to say off-season, let's call it a rebound between Arnold Classic and Mr. Olympia. Well, he spoke about this and he said that he thinks, he feels like his biggest improvements were uh, made in his back and his arms, which were his uh, two weak points. Basically, I would say his whole upper body is a weak point for him compared to his legs because his legs are absolutely ridiculous, insane. I mean, quads and glutes and everything, hamstrings, calves, everything. Uh, everything is just more dominant than his upper body. But if you talk about upper body specifically, then definitely back should have came up a little and his arms. And in the offseason, it really looked like he progressed, that his back was improving, that his arms were bigger. But now, I don't really think that's the case. Maybe there are some minor changes, but not really. Realistically, how much muscle can you put on in a couple of months of rebounding? When you rebound, your body retains more glycogen in your, in your muscles because you have been depleted for so long and just wants to store everything uh, as, long, as well as water, subcutaneous and uh, intramuscular. So you look bigger, you appear bigger, especially if you're pumping your arms every day or whatever, a couple of times a week in your back and you look great when you're pumped under great lighting in the gym, but when you diet down, you lose that quote-unquote muscle that you gained very rapidly, as fast as you gained it, that's how fast you lose it. That's why everybody says long off-seasons are the best for progress, because if you maintain certain amount of weight and you stay there for a long time and it sticks, you know, it stays on your body, when you diet down, it doesn't go away just like that. You know, faster you gain something, faster you lose it, so I'm expecting Urs to be similar to Arnold Classic. I just hope he's going to peak better because the Arnold Classic, he was kind of flat, you know. He was really conditioned, but he was flat. I hope this time around he's going to come in fuller and let's say he made, I don't know, 5% improvements in the back and the arms, which could be enough to get him in top 3 at the Mr. Olympia. I don't see him being top 2. I don't think he can beat both Ramon Dino and Terence Ruffin, I don't see that happening, maybe one of these guys will slip, but I'm, yeah, if I was a betting man, I would bet on both of those guys ahead of Wurz, I would have Wurz in fourth, best case scenario, let's say he beats Brion Ainsley again as he did the Arnold, which I'm sure he will do, because Brion, uh, Brion looks like he completely melted away, I think his career is pretty much over, and as far as the other guys that are very dangerous, like uh, Fabian, like uh, Gabriel, Zanzanelli, and some other guys also, like, those, all those guys uh, maybe can take out Urs, but most likely they won't. If I was a batting man, I would bet Urs is going to be third or fourth, but we'll see. Right now, he does look pretty amazing. If the show was held tomorrow, he would win it, <laughs> because nobody is this conditioned. Nobody is this hard, this conditioned, this ready for the stage. He's ready ahead of time, like, seriously, ahead of time. Like, five weeks out, he's pretty much ready. And again, did he really make any progress in that rebound or off-season, whatever you want to call it? Uh, again, look at the arms here from the front. Like, I don't know, man. I don't know if he made any progress. They're still way behind his legs. Way behind. I mean, Chris Bumps doesn't have, like, the best bicep, tricep insertions, but his arms are pretty big. Like, they're, they're big arms. Worse, he definitely needs to add more, a lot more mass in those arms if he wants to challenge Chris Bumstead or inherit the throne after Chris Bumstead is retired. And in order to do that, I think he needs a longer off season. He needs to gain some more body fat percent. If he stays lean like this year around and he travels and does all these videos and appearances, you know, it's awesome for his uh, for his business, for his social media, for um, you know, marketing himself. But as far as competitive bodybuilding, as far as making progress on his physique, looking better and bigger on the stage. Yeah, that's gonna take something a little bit more of a different approach. You know, a longer off-season where he eats a ton of food and he just trains really hard and he doesn't travel all over the world and, and does all this cardio and everything like that. So if he doesn't compete at the Arnold Classic next year, I think he's going to be able to make more progress for the next Mr. Olympia. This one, however, we'll see what he's gonna do. My prediction would be, if I had to say one spot, I would say fourth. 
Whatever you guys think about Urs Kaletsinski and his most recent physique update, let me know down below in the comment section. Alright, next we have an update of Derek Lansford. As you can see, this guy looks pretty freaking impressive. Honestly, I kind of signed him off a little bit at some point. Like, he looked amazing at that guest posing, but then he, he faded away for a while there. He probably went off of gear, I don't know. And now, now he started to look like seriously really, really good. Like, he's big. He's so big and round. He's so squarish. He has a ton of 3D muscle and his conditioning is coming along quite nicely. And now, without that weight cap, his approach right now must be completely different from what they used to do before. When I say they, of course, I mean Honey Rambo than him. And now, I mean, he's, he's prepping for open and he has arguably the best coach in history of bodybuilding, really. Like, who is there that can challenge Honey Rambo as far as results? Only Chad Nichols. Chad Nichols created Ronnie Coleman, Big Remy now as well, and he had a lot of success with so many other great guys like Plex Fielder, like Nasser El Sambari, and so many others. But Handy Rambert has the biggest number of Olympia wins in all the divisions on Mr. Olympia. He pretty much created Phil Heath. He helped Jay uh, make that comeback in 2009. You know, those two guys are the biggest legends as far as coaching in bodybuilding. And Derek has the help of uh, one of the best in the world, arguably the best in the world. And I'm sure Hanny Rambert hated the fact that he had to uh, squeeze somehow Derek Lansford in that 212. I mean, this guy is a freaking monster, and he had to do the 212 because of his height. So I'm sure Honey hated that process. Like, he had to probably uh, diet down a lot of muscle to make that weight. Now, they have a lot more freedom, man. They, they, they have five more weeks to carve him up, to make those separations deep, and also to try to maintain this crazy fullness, this crazy 3D, this crazy... I wouldn't even say roundness, I would say squarishness, or whatever is the word, because he looks like a freaking square, like he looks like a, like a, like a fridge, but in a good way, he has small waist as well, so he looks really, really massive, uh, with a small waist, with great symmetry, with great balance, with great proportions, great bone structure, this guy could surprise us and like be in the top three at the Mr. Olympia, we'll see. I mean, he did win the 212 Olympia, we'll see how he's gonna do in the Open. I think, I think that in white was a really good thing that happened to bodybuilding, and I think this guy is going to be amazing on that stage. I don't think people are aware how good he is going to be. So let's wait, let's wait and see in those five weeks, he's going to be an amazing Mr. Olympia with so many great bodybuilders. <laughs> This guy is my wild card. Like, if he brings what we, what I am expecting, he's going to bring. He can be like either first or second. That's how I see it. I think William Bonac is that good, and he was able to beat like most of these guys that are doing this show before. I would say all of them. Like, he was able to beat a, a big Ramy. He was beating Brandon Curry before he became the Brandon Curry we know, before he won the Mr. Olympia. Since he won that Mr. Olympia, he never beat him, but in my opinion, he beat him this year at the Arnold Classic. The only reason why he didn't win that show was the gyno, which he removed. And this photo that you're looking right now is actually not recent. This is actually from November 2nd which is like, uh, let's say, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, as he says in the caption, his coach, Chad Nichols, again, uh, Chad Nichols has William Bonac now as well. But Honey Rambert has uh, Harry Chupin, who beat Bonac last year, and also he has Eric Lansford, so it's hard to say who is a better coach right now. Chad Nichols has the reigning Mr. Olympia, uh, Honey Rambert probably has a bigger roster. Anyways, this is Bonac. 18 days ago or so, like two and a half weeks ago, and as you can see, he looked amazing, and I don't know what he's looking right now, but it's probably like a lot better, because he has been changing really rapidly uh, so far. Now, as far as his legs, you don't see them in this photo. Is there a reason why he's not showing them? Is he hiding them because they are not looking very good? From what I heard from Chad Nichols in one interview, he said that earlier, uh, uh, William Monarch suffered a leg injury, I think it was a hamstring injury, which prevented him uh, from doing like uh, squats and, uh, you know, squat uh, kind of movements, so his leg suffered some size loss, but Chad Nichols says that that injury has healed completely, and if that is the case, then William Monarch is able to train his legs really hard again. 
So I don't know why he's not showing them. Maybe because they progressed so much he doesn't want to reveal them just yet. In these sweatpants, I don't think they look that big. They don't look small. So I'm guessing they should be at least okay. That's, that's like the thing that I worry about. Like last year at the Mr. Olympia, his legs were down in size. And I think that's why he plays so low. You know, out of top five, sixth. Then he had to qualify for that Mr. Olympia by winning Boston Pro, which he did where he looked absolutely insane, ridiculous. And if he brings similar conditioning, similar shape, package, whatever, from that Boston Pro, without a gyno that he had surgically removed. And also... Chad Nichols talked about this as well. He said that William Bonek was never as heavy as he is right now. They pushed him to 120 kilos, uh, which is like 265, something like that. And um, he didn't want to eat. He said that he couldn't get that weight. There was no way. He, he tried before. He, it just wouldn't happen. So Chad Nichols was really forcing him, making him eat more and more food. And finally, he reached that goal, that milestone, 120 kilos, which is a lot, man. That's heavy. That's heavy for a guy of his height with this kind of body fat percent. So that's going to mean that William Bonac is probably going to come bigger than he was at Boston and Arnold with no gyno and arguably, probably, probably more conditioned with better shape, better condition, better overall package. And if he does that, where can he place? I mean, let's say he beat Brandon Curry. As everybody agrees at the Arnold Classic and Brandon Curry is second at the Mr. Olympia. I'm pretty sure he's going to beat Brandon Curry this year at the Mr. Olympia. Then there is only Big Ramy left. And if Big Ramy is slightly off, William Bonek can win the Mr. Olympia. I don't feel like they're going to give it to him for some reason because he's short, you know. Mr. Olympia is usually a tall, a big man competition. And William Bonner comes from 212 originally. He used to compete in 212 and uh, most of his Mr. Olympia Open shows he was maybe like 10 pounds over the 212 weight cap. He was probably at around like 225, maybe 230, something like that. Hopefully this year he's going to be bigger, but... I don't know if they're going to give it to him, but realistically, like, he can beat all of these guys. Let's be honest. Whatever you guys think, though, tell me down below in the comment section. Like this video if you enjoyed it, guys. And for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.